I'm Chris Irish. I'm a local developer. I run a consultancy here called Burst. Um, I'm super Irish on Twitter. Uh, Burstdev.com is the site for the company, and then I blog very infrequently at ChristopherIrish.com. Um, so today I'm going to show you a couple gems. This is going to be a much shorter presentation than the previous one. Um, it's just going to cover, you know, just very high level what these things can do and how they can help you and uh, how they're pretty helpful. Um, so the first one's Chronic. Uh, it's a natural language date and time parser. It's just a wrapper on top of the built-in Ruby date and time processor stuff, but it lets you just write in English uh, and then create dates out of it. So, you know, why would you want to use this over, you know, using the built-in stuff? Um, and mainly it's just for developer convenience. Um, so here, Chronic, you could say parse and then give it a string of some um, English or I don't know if it actually works in other languages, that'd be a good uh, thing to look up. But so today at 2 p.m., it'll just create a date object or a date time object, and uh, it just knows how to read that. And it can read tons and tons of different things, and even like, like catch the spellings of like months and stuff and still figure it out. As opposed to date time parse, and then you'd have to pass it, you know, like a UTC string or something like that. Um, it kind of, I kind of like it because it like documents itself and it's easy to read. You know, you're just like, today at 2 p.m., yeah, okay, gotcha. Instead of being like, oh, what, what's 1400? So it's just kind of nice to use. Uh, another thing is you can see kind of web savvy, and uh, you could actually allow users to give you times and dates in English if they were like, creating events or something like that, schedules, you can parse it. I've never done that, but you totally could do it. Works. That thing works with like uh, epoch dates too. Probably. About to start it. Like like Linux, like uh, you know the, the epoch dates are like numbers you can't like decipher. Oh, like to the ticks? Yeah. Since, yeah. Since, know, I don't know, since actually. 1970. Yeah. yeah. So since the, since the time time already do that? Time that. Yeah. Oh, does it? Yeah. 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 Uh, so just, well, so since this is built on top of the Ruby stuff, like, it, it can't go, like, Blurdy. super far in the past. It'll, it'll meet the limit of the regular date time libraries and stuff. So. Um, so it understands lots of stuff in simple and complex language. So, you know, you can say Tuesday at 7, tomorrow, Friday last week, 6 p.m., July. And then more complex stuff. So third day last week, five hours before tomorrow at noon, all kinds of stuff. Uh, you, can, you can almost throw anything at it, and it just like figures it out. It's pretty crazy. Um, it'll, it'll know whether you want a time or a date object. Okay. It's always a date time. Yeah. Um, well, well, actually, it's a good question. Maybe if you don't put a time at the end of it, maybe it would give you a date. I can't remember. It's actually been about two years since I've used this actually in a project. Um, but it, it's pretty mature and hasn't changed much actually since last time I looked at it. Uh, so with respect to specific dates, it'll it'll take basically anything that the regular um, time parse will take, plus all the extra English on top of it. Um, what about different uh, month, month, day, day, so international dates? Yeah, that's actually coming up. Yeah, you can actually tell it the format that you're going to give it. So like in UK time, when it put the date before the month, it'll pick that. It's like an option flag um, that you have to pass into it and parse it. Um, so it has time zone support, um, so if you don't give it a time zone, it just defaults to local system time. But uh, it can use the active support time zone stuff in Rails. So in Rails you can say, you know, set the time zone to specific time, and then you just pass that in the chronic. Um, so like if you needed that in an app where a user could set their own uh, time zone, in a before filter you could just say, you know, chronic time class equals that user's time zone, and you can still use it, and it's scoped to them. Um, and so these are some of the options that it takes. Um, so it, when you say something like 5 p.m., it's always assumed to be of today. But you can change what now is when it goes into the parsing. So you can be like a week from now or whatever. I, I don't know. You can get pretty crazy with it. Um, for the UK dates and stuff, if you want to put the date before the month, it has this Indian precedence, precedence um, option that you can pass into it. Uh, then ambiguous year in the future bias. Uh, so basically, if you give it a, a month and a day without a year, um, it, or no, I'm saying that wrong. Well, basically, there's a scope of 50 years in the future and 50 years in the past that it'll look for in that time range. If you need to go further than that, you need to basically use this option. Um, the exact UK case, I can't remember off the top of my head right now, but just know that if you need to go pretty far in the future, uh, it, it won't figure it out unless you let it know that it needs to go that far. And then a guess, basically what happens is it'll always try to find a single point reference, like a date time for whatever string you pass it, and if it's ambiguous, or you want it to be ambiguous, you can. So like if you said, uh, like, today, um, you can say guess true, and basically it'll return you the 24 hour span of today. So today at you know, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, UTC, all the way to uh, you know, uh, 
59, 59. If that makes sense. I don't know why you'd actually want that, but it'll, it'll give it to you. <laughs> and that's basically all there is to it. It's, it's, it's pretty fun. I use it a lot for like um, default values. Like if you use the default value for Jim or like any of the other ones, and you need to, like say you're creating events and an event always has a default start time of like 2 p.m., I'll just use this and just be like chronic parse 2 p.m. Yeah. So, and that, that's all there is to that. Yeah, Ice Cube's another gem um, for basically creating repeated events, kind of like an iCal. If you use iCal, you can say, you know, this event's going to happen every month on the third Thursday for like the res meetings or whatever. And it's a way to build up schedules so that you can then like query against it to see like, is today that event day? Give me all the occurrences of it and, and so forth. Uh, so the way it works is you build a schedule, um, you add rules to it. Uh, there's exclusion and inclusion rules. Um, and you also have exclusion and inclusion dates. So a rule would be like, you know, uh, every Monday of the week this happens, except for this one Monday, I don't want that included in there, and that would be an exclusion rule. Um, and then once you have your schedule built, you can test against it, the occurrences, or you can get all the occurrences for as far as you want. Um, you actually have to be careful because it'll, it'll go super far and give you like a thousand things. So if you don't want that, you have to kind of limit how many events or whatever you're using it for a user could create. Um, so these are the different types. Um, there's the recurrence rules for including, exception rules, and the recurrence dates, exception dates, pretty much what I just covered. Um, so here's a simple example. Um, you say Ice Cube schedule new and then start it for today. So like my schedule is going to start today moving forward in time. And then a very simple rule is every Monday. So it has a syntax where you'd say this rule is going to be weekly and day one would be Monday. And it's, all the days are um, zero based. So Sunday is zero, Saturday would be a six. So that's what it's saying. So every week on this day, um, and then I'd add that rule to my schedule, and then I would say, show, all, show me all the occurrences from now to one month from now. And this is the results of return. These are all the occurrences of that day. Um, and so, so then you can make assertions against the schedule object back here. You could say, you know, uh, does this occur at this time? Does it occur on this time? Uh, if I have a random day, does it happen in my schedule between the occurrences? Stuff like that. It's pretty, it's pretty sweet. Uh, and then there's a bunch of occurrence methods on it. So you can say, give me all the occurrences to some end date. Give me just everything. Give me the first end occurrences. Just give me the first one. Or you can sit there and iterate like a, a do while loop and just say next one, next one, next one. Or you can say, give me the next three from this date. Stuff like that. Or if you're on a day and there's an end date in the future, you can say, give me all the remaining ones so you don't you know, have to you know, iterate over the ones you don't really care about. So way to persist it. Yeah, it's coming up. Um, and so the rules can get super complex, like you can do pretty much anything you can think of. Um, so for a daily one, basically they're all like, daily is the kind of like the scope, um, and then if you pass it a number or if you don't, so like this was just daily without a number, it'd just be every single day this is going to happen. If you pass it a number, then it knows how to skip, so it'd be every third day. So likewise, the second rule here is every other week on a Monday and Tuesday, so you're saying, you know, if it was just weekly without a two, it'd be every week, but you're saying weekly two, so it skips by like that. Um, and then it gets it gets a little bit crazy, so like this last one here, where it's using this day of the week, two, one, minus one. So um, day of the week is that same thing. It uh, starts on zero, goes to six, and uh, and then when you, there's two different ways to do it. That two, um, you can also pass it symbols that reference the day. So it could be symbol Monday, symbol Tuesday. Um, or you could use two, so it goes both ways. But then when you give it the uh, array after it, it's the actual occurrences of that. So that's how you're getting the first and last Tuesday there. That makes sense. Um, and then there's even more stuff. It goes um, for yearly scope, minutes, hours, um, and even seconds. Uh, so here's the persistence. So basically you can take your schedule and just YAMLify it, and then you can save that into whatever data store that you're using, and then you can pull that back out. Um, and then if you have a safe schedule and you want to override when it starts, you can pass it in this uh, start override uh, option here. Um, and then it also output it to like a friendly string format. So if you build a schedule um, and say to string, it'll actually give you like the English version of your complex rules. And then if you want to like spit something out to iCal, it'll actually give you the, it, I don't, I'm not familiar with iCal, but I guess it's like the format that it uses so you can import it into it. 
Um, and so I'm just going to show a simple class I made a couple years ago, actually, to wrap this stuff to um, kind of add recurrence to a Rails model that I had done. And so basically I had these views where you can uh, create an event, it could have a start and end date, and then I could give it some recurrence, and the client wanted to you know every week, every day, every two weeks, every month. So that stuff doesn't actually exist, but I, I have to make the rules to actually implement that stuff. Um, and then you can also have a moving date, so the first Monday of every month, and, and so on and so forth. Um, so basically I just created this, can you guys read that? It's kind of small. Um, so this is actually an old Rails 2, 3 app that I haven't touched in a few years, but basically what I had was an event model, obviously, and then I created this just plain Ruby class that would wrap um, Ice Cube to give the recurrent stuff. And then using the serialization stuff to YAML, I could just save that into a field against that event. So if I did a query for an event, I could then open up its, um, its schedule, basically, and just test against the occurrences and whatnot. Um, so the initialization, I mean, this is just a plain Ruby class. So I'm just spinning some values that are just coming from a form, right? There's a start date, end date. There's recurring end date, frequency, blah, blah, blah. And the way that the actual rule building works is it kind of looks like ARail. So like you create a schedule and then you can just keep calling these methods on it, but it won't actually evaluate it until you call the occurrence test methods. So like, um, so basically create a schedule and create a rule and then further on in this class inside methods, I can just keep appending different calls onto this recurrence rule. And then when I actually do a test, I can just test against that, if that makes some sense. Um, and then I did some, some mappings too. So since everything's zero based, um, you don't have to do this, but like, so Sunday being zero, Monday being one. In my forms, I didn't want everything to be just like integers, and it makes it easier to debug and actually read the English. And so I just made these mappings so when I actually like, we use certain stuff, um, it would just turn it into the zeros and ones, or you know, the integers that it needs to actually create this. So you know, every day would just be a recurrence rule of daily. Every week is uh, a weekly one with the days being a Monday through Friday, uh, and so, so on and so forth there. Like I said, you know, you don't. There's nothing built into it for like every week or every two weeks or monthly. You, you have to build these rules from scratch. Um, and then, uh, the, basically, I just made some a class method here to load it. So, um, you know, just read it from the database and just load it and then create that schedule again and just append it to me uh, as an attribute. And then I can just pull that attribute off it in my model to, you know, test against or whatever. Uh, it works really good though. Uh, is there any questions on? You ever looked at Rufus? Yeah, Rufus schedule or whatever. Is it still maintained? Uh, <laughs> it came out like five years ago, and then people were using. I didn't see people. this. We were using Rufus. I wish I'd have seen this. Oh yeah, I've never. I remember seeing Rufus. I looked at it, and I was like, "No, nah, I'm not going to use that." <laughs> and I, I ended up using. Good that choice. Yeah, but um, Rufus can it make PDFs too? It's like for scheduling. Can it make also like PDFs or something like that, or is it just for? No, just for scheduling. Maybe there was some rapper I saw around for this. Anyways, that's all I have for you guys.